Hey guys, we're here to talk today about the table method of solving linear equations. I know it sounds like fun. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, feel free to pause and rewind if there's anything you don't understand. Let's get going, all right? We are going to take a look at this one first. All right, so the table method, uh, the directions are going to say complete the table for the value of y given each value of x in order to graph each equation. So our answer is going to be a graph, and we are going to be given a table of values here. So the table, let's just say we have a negative 2 here, a negative 1, a 0, 1, and a 2. That will be given to us. All right, sometimes the table will be given to us. This method is used not as much as the other methods that we are going to be using. There's tons of other methods in order to graph a linear equation. Um, the table method is just one of them. You know, you plug the number, the x value, in for the equation, and you get the y value, which is the output, and that gives you your ordered pairs. You plot the ordered pairs, you put a line through them. Uh, that's what we're going to show here. All right, so we, uh, the equation, we haven't been given one yet. We've got a, I'm just going to pick one, okay? So let's see down here. Oh, it's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so let's just take the equation. Uh, let's start off with y equals x. Okay, just a very basic, uh, not used to seeing something like this, um, just because there's no numbers in it. So uh, since there's no numbers in it, what is the slope and the y-intercept? Remember, the slope is the number that comes in front of the variable x, and the y-intercept is the number that comes over here all by itself. Well, you know, a lot of kids mistakenly say the slope is zero because they don't see any numbers right there. I, you know, how many x's are there right there? There's one, so the slope would be a one. And how many numbers do you see out here? I don't see any numbers, so therefore the y-intercept is going to be zero, okay? So when we put the variables up here like the negative two uh, and for x we get so i'm going to write this over again uh, let's see if it'll let me put it right here yes okay so we are going to put each number in for that variable x and the first number happens to be negative two so when we put negative, and anytime we put a number in for uh, a, a variable, we are going to use parentheses. So we put negative 2 in for x, and as you can see, just y equals negative 2. So I know that seems like it's very, very easy. Um, it does get a little bit more difficult. What if we put a negative 1 in for x? So in for x, we put a, in for x, so we put a negative 1. Then y would equal negative one. And I think y'all can start seeing where this pattern is going to go. And when you put in a zero, it's one one, and then two two. So there are ordered pairs. We are now going to plot those ordered pairs and put a line through them. And we know since it's a linear equation, it has a constant rate of change. Uh, we know that it is going to be a straight line. Okay. So we have a point here. It looks like, and then we have a point here at negative one negative one we have another point here at zero zero and I'm guys you only need two points to make a line I like doing at least a, a couple just because usually when we're not using software uh, the more points you have the steeper your line is going to be all right Okay, so here are our points. So now we're just going to put a line through them, right? Now, I don't know what other teachers are going to tell you to do, but I like for my line to go all the way through my graph, okay, my graph. I want it to go all the way through my graph, just showing that it, it keeps going, okay? Um, I technically should have used this guy right here. I'm going to use this instead. All right, so here's what our line looks like, all right? Now that is the um, graph of y equals x. As you can see, it's a diagonal line. It goes through those points right there. It's going diagonally through the graph. All right, so y equals negative x would be a line that looks like this. It'd be decreasing, and it'd be going through a graph like this. Okay, now on to a, more, a little bit more challenging problem, okay? We are going to go, and let's take the equation 
Okay, so here we're going to type in our equation y equals, uh, let's see, let's do negative 4x plus 2. Okay, so here's our equation, and I'm just going to copy this over again because we're going to need it on the next row. All right, so guys, in this table, values of x are not given to us, and this is where kids really start to freak out about this. You pick your own values for x. All right, you can put whatever numbers you want in there. If you want to put negative 50, negative 51, negative 52, I mean, that's up to you. I wouldn't recommend it. It's going to go way off your graph. So I would recommend taking um, numbers that would, for one, would fit on your graph and that kind of makes sense for the context of the question. What I mean is let's pick the easiest negative numbers. Let's pick zero and pick the easiest positive numbers. Generally, what we're going to use are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Guys, those are the easiest numbers that we could pick. That's 0, 1, and 2. We've got 0 and the easiest positive numbers, and then the easiest neg negative numbers we could use. You don't want to pick just all positive numbers because you would have points just on this side. All right? You want to pick negative, 0, and positive. So here we have the equation. That's not what I want to do. And we are going to plug in for x what our variable is each time, okay? So our first variable is x for x is negative two. So we're gonna do now negative four times negative two plus two, all right? And that is going to give us negative four times negative two, of course gives us eight, and eight plus two would give us 10. So that is going to give us the, negative, the order paired negative two, 10. Now as you can see, that goes way off, way off our graph up here, that's okay, all right? The next one we're going to put in here is a negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 gives us 4, and 4 plus 2 gives us 6. So we would get, uh, let me see, that was uh, 4. 4 plus 2 would give us 6. So our next order pair is negative 1, 6. All right, y'all see what I'm getting at here? And then we put a 0 in there. Look, guys, let's just do some mental math. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 would give us 2. All right, so that, that just canceled out when we put a zero in there. All right, now we're going to put a one in there. Four times one gives us, or negative four times one gives us negative four. And negative four plus two would give us not six, not negative six. It's going to give us negative two. So negative four, positive, I'm sorry, one, negative two will be our answer for this one. That's our output value, because it would say y equals negative 2. When x is 1, y is negative 2. So now we're going to put a 2 in for our x here. And negative 4 times 2 would give us negative 8. And negative 8 plus 2 would give us negative 6. So we're going to put negative 6 right here. And now we have our table of values, okay? We are going to plot those points here. So the one thing that I really wanted to show you with the, on this one was, guys, if there's no values of x given, you create the value of x. And we're going to start seeing that when we graph nonlinear equations also. All right, we already said negative 2, 10 goes way off over our graph. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's the very top point up here, okay? Let me move it around a little bit. All right. The next order pair we have is going to be at 0, 2, which is right here. And as you can see already, that line is going to be going down. And it should be going down because our slope is negative. The rate of change is negative. So our next one is going to be 1, negative 2, which is going to be down here. 1, negative 2. And then we have 2, negative 6. So that one is going to be the last one down here. Be. All right, now we are going to put a line through it. We're going to be done with it. Go through all the ordered pairs. You want to go all the way through your graph, and that's what that would look like, okay? Uh, and the next example or the next video.